Hey, it's Tim here. In today's video, we're talking about the rank function. In today's video, I'm going to cover all the variants of the rank function and also tell you generally how the rank function works with all the settings and all the different variants of it you can go through. That's rank, rank modified, rank dense, rank percentile, and rank unique. Okay, let's get stuck in. Okay, to get this done right, we need to do some setup first. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect to the American Superstore. I'm gonna go ahead and click the second uh, icon here and you'll see that it loads it up uh, nice and easy, very quick. Now, the thing we want to do is build up a list of manufacturers and the number of products they have. Now, if you can do this off the top of your head, go ahead, get it done. But otherwise, I'm gonna go here to the product hierarchy, drag manufacturer onto rows, and then I'm gonna drag product name onto detail. This is because I want to count the number of distinct products that manufacturer has. So I'll drag it onto detail. The reason I'm doing it here is because it gives us a little bit of context. And when you put things on detail, I always sort of treat it as like a safe space to work with it before you then put it in the view. So I'm gonna go ahead here and click on this little drop down, go to measure and then select count distinct. I could have written a calculation to do that, but I've just done it here in the view very nice and simply for you to follow. So let's drag that onto where it says ABC, show me will kick in. And when I drop that in there, you'll see that we now start to get numbers. Essentially, we are seeing the number of products behind each of these manufacturers. Okay, for the next step, I want to keep just the top 30 or top 40 manufacturers in this list. So what I'll do is I'll actually go down to this drop down on the right of manufacturer, select sort, and then I will sort it in descending order using the field that's already in the view. Tableau will give a guess that that's count distinct that I'm interested in, and it will go ahead and do that. And so you should have other as the top manufacturer, along with Xerox, Avery, Newell, and so on and so forth. That's pretty much sort of the setup. Let's go ahead and keep this to the top 30. I'm gonna drag manufacturer. I'm gonna hold command actually and drag manufacturer onto the filters pane. And rather than trying to manually select the top 30 or top 40, I'm gonna go ahead to this top function over here on the right hand side, select by field. And again, you'll see that it's automatically picked up the product name and count distinct. So I can just go in here and type 30. And now we're pretty much good to go. We've got the top 30 manufacturers and the number of products they each have sorted in descending order. I'm gonna keep it sorted in descending order because we want to see the rank is working, okay? Let's get the rank working. Okay, to set up the rank function, instead of doing anything in the view, when you get good at Tableau, you do a lot of things by just double clicking in the shelf or double clicking in the pill and doing calculations. But whenever you're teaching people Tableau, I like to not do that because people want to see how the calculations are done. So I'll open up the calculation window. And like I've been showing people in all my Tableau function videos, if you go over here to the right hand side, you can obviously like list all the different types of uh, calculations that you've got. Rank is actually a table calculation. So if I go to that, you'll see if I go right down you'll see here are all the ranks rank rank dense rank modified rank percentile and rank unique for now don't worry too much about the term table calculation I'm going to make another video on this at some point in the near future it's quite a tough topic to handle so let's try and not make this video too complex I'm just going to type in rank so we only see the ones that we're interested in and you can see that they're variants of the rank function but they all fundamentally work the same way you have the function, then you have the expression that you're trying to rank, then the order in which you're trying to rank it, ascending or descending. If I go to rank dense, you'll see the same thing, rank modified, rank percentile, and rank unique. The only thing that's really changing is the name of the function, but they all fundamentally work in the same way. So I'm going to show you how it works first with rank, and then we're going to go through this and do some uh, sort of playing around with all these different ranks to see what they actually do, okay? I'm gonna double click rank and what I'm going to do to make sure that I'm ranking the correct thing, I'm gonna hold command on a Mac. If you're on a Windows machine, it's control. And if you just drag the count distinct of product name into this space, you'll see that this little arrow at the top of the calculation window is sort of jumping around here. That's basically telling you that it's gonna drop it in between those brackets. So let's drop that in there and then you'll see that this calculation is now valid. We're pretty much good to go. Let's call this what it is. I'm just gonna call this rank normal. I'm not gonna name it in a in a too detailed fashion here because um, we're only looking at the rank function and we're only counting product names, so I don't need to rank anything else, okay? So let's just do that, rank normal, hit apply. And now that we've done that, we can actually drag rank normal, whilst the calculation view is open, by the way, 
into this space here and you'll see that show me kicks in again and it automatically changes our view to this table. And now we're pretty much flying. This is the rank function working. It's really super easy to work with and it's really super simple to understand. I'm gonna hit okay so we can close this uh, function window down. We'll come back to it to figure out how to change the order in which it ranks. But for now, let's close it and give our table a bit of space so we can see what's going on. Now, if you look down this list, you'll see that everything has one decimal place. That's just standard because of the way the view is built. We can change this later in formatting. I'm not gonna bother doing that right now. If I go from the top to bottom, you'll see that this is counting in a pretty uh, you know, reasonable order, apart from when we get to where we have repeating values. So you can see here where you have 18 twice. It goes 15, 16, 16, and then 18. So this gives you a hint as to how this works. Essentially, the standard rank function will do two things. It will count in order of the largest to the smallest, that's descending by default. And any, anywhere there's duplicates, it will insert a gap after the item. So you'll see here we go from 14 to 15 to 16. This is number 17, and then we go straight to 18. So you can essentially count all the way down the data set and the bottom value should sort of correlate with the last number. So if we keep going down here, you see actually these 12s all share the same rank, but fundamentally we'd sort of be uh, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, it's probably 28 here or something like that. So that's just something to bear in mind. The normal rank function will sort of do a slightly strange thing. A lot of people sort of don't like this because it's not the way humans count, but this is the way this particular rank function, okay? Now, let's go back into the uh, rank function itself. I've lost track of where it is. Uh, I'll click and edit, and you'll notice there is one more function, uh, one more feature that we have in the rank function, and that is sorting by ascending or descending. So let's go ahead and change this to ascending because of course the view is already sorting by descending by default. It tells you this here, the default order is descending. So let's go ahead and just do what it says. It says essentially to open up a brackets and just type in ASC. So what I'll do is I'll just do this. I'll just um, sort of do this and I'll just do this, ASC. And you'll see this doesn't work, okay? And this is actually a pet hate of mine because um, these brackets sort of confuse a lot of people. If you see this opening brackets and this right brackets, I've seen so many people try and type exactly what's in here and they get lost. So don't do this, you don't need them. I'm actually just gonna go ahead and delete this right here. I did it deliberately so you'd see that you don't need them because a lot of people follow the documentation to the letter and they realize, oh, it's not working. Why is it not working? This is why. So here we have ASC. I'm just gonna close this gap and now watch what happens when I hit apply. You've got the rank here on the left-hand side. I'm gonna hit apply and watch this change, okay? It's gone in reverse. So now it's counting from the top to the bottom. Now, because it does that, um, because the sorting here is already defined by my manufacturer field, nothing changes. So the numbers here essentially changed. If I changed this rank based on the rank normal, everything would swap around. But because I've got the sort locked to the manufacturer, that's not gonna happen. So that's pretty much the basics of the rank function. Now what we're gonna do is look at the other variants of the rank function and see how they work. Okay, let's get stuck in. Okay, we've got the rank normal set up. I'm actually gonna go ahead and close this calculation window. And I'm a bit of a lazy calculation person. I like to duplicate my calculations wherever I can. It's actually got me in a couple of uh, spots before because I didn't realize I was duplicating so many things uh, and ended up uh, sort of getting confused myself. So uh, try not to do that. Um, you can uh, rename this here. I'm just gonna rename this here in the, uh, in the view and I'm gonna call this rank dense, uh, if that makes sense, so hit okay. And then I'm gonna open up this uh, calculation window just by clicking at it and you'll see that it's now called rank dense, but I'm now using the previous calculation that I was using. But we're gonna go here to the rank functions just by hitting search and the next one down is dense. Let's click on dense and see what it says. Returns the dense rank for the current row in the partition. Identical values are assigned an identical rank, but no gaps are inserted. So this is essentially going to do exactly the same thing but it's not going to insert the gaps that we're seeing. You're not gonna see this sort of skip from six to 10. You should get a sort of continuous uh, count. So uh, let's undo the ascending here. I'm actually gonna change this and put it to descending just so you can see that working. Although the default is descending, um, you can also just type that in here. Hit apply. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna change this rank statement here. We're just gonna add an underscore dense. So I have to look around my microphone. My microphone is right here. So whenever I'm doing this, I'm looking around my microphone rather than uh, 
um, uh, sort of trying to dodge dodge uh, my, my keyboard as it looks. So I hit apply and now that's ready to go. Now the reason you're not seeing any change is because of course we haven't brought it in. So let's go get the rank dense uh, function that we brought in, leave it in there. And now we can see that this is here, here it is uh, right next to our previous one, click okay. What I'll do is I'll go to the rank normal. Uh, it's a bit confusing hopping around, but just bear with me. Let's just type in DESC in here, hit apply, so we can see the ranks next to each other. And I'm going to change the order of these two just by changing the order in this left hand measure value section. I'm just going to drag rank dense down one, and you'll see the order changes. Okay. Notice that it says table down. Again, this is to do with table calculations, but I'm not going to go into that. Um, that's for another video. It gets really complex, but just know that what we're doing is we're counting from the top of the table to the bottom of the table. It's as simple as that. Okay, so here we are with the rank dense. It goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And here where you see 15, 16, you go 15, 16, 16, 17, 18, 18, 19, 20, 20. So we actually get to the bottom and we have 21 rather than having 26. And that's because it's not inserting any gaps. Pretty straightforward. Okay, for the next one, you know what we need to do? Duplicate rank dense, change that and rinse and repeat. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's uh, duplicate this. And uh, this time I'm going to edit it straight away and I'm going to rename it in the edit pane rather than anywhere else. And because I've forgotten what comes next, I'm going to look at this up and it's actually rank modified. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's type rank modified in here. You can actually auto complete. Sometimes this can be a little fishy. I don't know if you saw what it just did there. Because I deleted that bracket and I'd started typing right next to my count distinct function, it actually cleared it. So I'm going to undo that just so you can see that. If I have this brackets here, it won't actually do that. So if I do that and then I go in here and I type modified, then I auto complete. You'll see it doesn't delete that count distinct. So just be aware when you're doing that, if things change in front of you. That's probably why you're not sort of uh, paying attention to how it's editing it. So here we are with rank dense. Let's change this to rank modified. Okay, uh, modified. Here we go. Uh, I'm really trying to learn how to spell here. You can see that I really struggle with this. In fact, in all my videos, I really struggle with, it, with this. So uh, that's uh, nothing new. Uh, but let's go to rank modified and remind ourselves. So it returns the modified competition rank for the current row in the partition. Identical values are assigned an identical rank. Use the optional ascending and descending argument to specify ascending or descending order. The default order is descending. Okay, so what will this do? Let's find out. Let's find out. Let's hit apply rank modified and let's drag it in. I'm actually going to drag it in here into the measure values thing. You see, when you're working with Tableau, it's good to know all the different ways you can do something because then that way, when you've got something right in the middle of the view and you need to get on with the task, you can just do it another way. So I'm actually going to drop this rank modified over here on the left and you'll see that it actually goes into my table. Let's move this to the right hand side and let's see what it's doing. So let's look at this. Now we ended up going all the way to 30. So what's going on here? So let's go to where we have duplicates here. So we got 14, 15, 16, 16. Okay. So it actually skips the count. Essentially it goes to 17, 17, 18, 20, right? So it skips 19 and it goes forward. So it's essentially doing the exact same thing, but it's inserting the gap somewhere else in the, in the count. And so we end up sort of running ahead of our ranks. Okay. So very, very similar. You're sort of starting to get the hint here. These things work in a very sort of standard way. Okay. Um, now, the next thing to do is essentially keep changing this. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to duplicate this uh, again. And what we're going to do is edit it again. And the next time we'll do something different. I'll change up how we create this just so you can see another way of writing a calculation. This is our rank percentile. Now this is actually slightly different because what this is doing is it's looking at it um, in terms of a spread. Instead of in, instead of giving us a position, it's looking at the percentile spread and percentiles tend to work from zero to 100%, essentially zero and one. And it gives us sort of a range in between that. Okay, so let's go ahead, call this rank percentile. And if we just change this to percentile, I can't spell, so I'm just going to really hope uh, autocomplete kicks in. There we go. Rank percentile descending, uh, hit apply. That will create itself over here and we'll do the same thing and put it at the bottom below modified 
and then collapse this and then move this over to the left. So we can just see what's going on. So this time my face is in the way. So I'm going to move myself to the right, left hand side. Uh, I'm just going to be looking the wrong way for the rest of the video until we can see this table. But you can see what happens here. You see the top item is essentially in that you know zero side of the scale. And the last item is at the 100% side of the scale. So what this rank is doing is it's sort of telling you roughly where in the, you know, in the spread of your data you know, things are positioned. So stuff in the middle tends to be around 0 0.5. So this is actually technically the median value if you think of it that way. And then if you think of your, you know, the very top end, it's one, which is 100%. You could obviously change this to percentages, but you're just getting a, a value that tells you roughly where in the spread of the data this is. This is kind of handy when you're trying to visualize certain values and you're trying to understand how they're spread across your data, but you don't want to actually have that information encoded in the chart. You might want it as a color, this is how you could do that rank percentile on the value. And then you've got some sort of indicator using color to give you an idea of how the spread is going. OK, the last one is rank unique. So let's go ahead and click OK. And what I'm actually going to do here, I'm going to move my face back because I'm missing it over here on the left hand side. And let's uh, let's just do this. I'm just going to give the table a little less space and pull this down so that the uh, text can go over more rows so we can just get this nice and compact. Um, I'm going to double click in here. OK, I'm not going to actually create this uh, as we have done before. I'm going to be slightly brave and I'm going to try and write the whole thing inside of this window. OK, so this is a little bit sort of bold. So let's start by, you know, let's do the basics first. Let's bring a count product name in here. So I'm going to hold command and then drag it in here. You can see I can just see it inside of that little yellow orange thing. You can see it's in there and I've just managed to squeeze it in there. And now you can see we've got the count distinct there. I'm going to type in rank. OK and underscore. And then the thing we need to do is unique. Now, if I was to type enter in this place, what would it do? It would delete the count distinct. So first I'm going to type in an open bracket, then go back in here, type a U, then hit enter. And now it hasn't deleted that. And then all we need to do is go to the end and we need to close this off because we're missing one bracket because we've opened two. We need to close it off with two. And now we do that. This should be working. So this was a rank um, percentile, actually. No, rank unique. I, I've just created the last one here. Hit enter and boom, we have that ready typed into the table. Now, notice because this wasn't typed as a calculation, you've got this sort of weird notation where it just names it using the calculation. And we also don't have it here on the left hand side. So how do we make it go there? We just hold command, drag it over here to the left hand side. And when we do that, it creates the calculation for us. Really, really cool tip there. So call this rank unique and uh, hit enter. And now our rank unique is over there on the left and it's renamed this here on the top right. So I've snuck in a little tip there just to make this a little bit more interesting. And now we're pretty much good to go. So what's going on here? Well, pretty much everything gets a unique rank. Remember, we had 30 rows in our data and now we have a unique number for everything. OK, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten all the way down to 30. Nothing gets counted twice. So that's pretty much it. That's rank unique. That's all the variants of rank. We've gone through them in a lot of detail. Now, the really powerful thing we haven't done here is really sort of unpick what's going on with the table calculations. You'll see here on the left hand side, you see these triangles here. And these essentially tell you that there's some table calculation logic going on. And earlier on, I told you that everything here is working using the table down uh, direction. So it's essentially counting from the top down. When we do another video on table calculations, you'll understand that you can actually do calculations in lots of different directions in certain groupings. So let's say, for example, that I had brought in a category and I put it in front of manufacturer. Well, suddenly my ranks stop working correctly because they're not necessarily counting the right thing within each of these groups. So rather than make this video more complex, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a separate video on table calculations where I'll explain that and then we will revisit some of the most popular table calculations and see how table calculations and understanding that affects each and every one of them. OK, so that's for another video. Be sure to subscribe to find out more about that in due course. Otherwise, we've got to the end of the video. You know what happens here. If you've liked the video, uh, drop a comment below. Let me know what you'd like to see maybe next. What's the next function you'd like me to record a video about? And I'll catch you in the next video.